read this, the definite integral from 1 to 4 of 2x plus 1 with respect to x. So what we need to do is we need to start by taking the antiderivative. Okay, we know the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of 1 is x. Now, since we're in the habit of putting plus c, we're going to put plus c right here, but I'm going to show you why in a second. You really don't have to do it. Okay? And then we use this notation, use like a, a right bracket, and you put your limits of integration there again. Okay, we call those numbers the limits of integration. So this is just telling yourself, okay, I took the antiderivative, but I still have to evaluate it. All right, so then we're going to plug in the top number, and we're going to subtract. Make sure you put parentheses around this because... You have to subtract the entire thing. All right. So 4 squared is 16 plus 4 is 20. So we've got 20 plus C for the first part. Minus 1 squared plus 1 is 2. Okay. So when we distribute that negative or when we subtract what's in those parentheses there, we get 18 and we've got C minus C. It goes away. Okay. Um, so the value of this definite integral from 1 to 4 of 2x plus 1 with respect to x is 18. So, moral of the story, at this point right here, you really, you don't, when you're doing definite integration, you don't have to put the plus c anymore, okay? Now, if you want to do it just to keep yourself in the habit uh, for when you have indefinite integrals, that's fine, but you really don't have to have it there because it is always, always, always going to cancel. Yes, sir? So, Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's like when we did derivatives, um, when we just took the derivative, we got a function, but when we wanted to know the instantaneous rate of change, we plugged in a number and we got a number for the answer. Okay. Yes, your answer is just 18. Okay, so indefinite integration, you get a function. Definite integration, you get a number. Every single time. Okay? Every single time. All right. So we're just going to practice. Let's say that the limits of integration, instead of being from 1 to 4, let's say that it's from negative 3 to 2. Okay? We're going to use the same function. We're just changing the limits of integration. So same process. But we already did the antiderivative, so I'm just going to use my work from up there. Again, I don't have to put the plus C, so I'm not going to write it this time. All right. Uh, plug in my top number minus parentheses. Plug in the bottom number. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 6, or 4 plus 2 is 6. Mouth's getting ahead of my brain. Okay, negative 3 squared is positive 9. Positive 9 plus negative 3 is 6. So this one's actually 0. As long as I did all my arithmetic, right? 9, 6, yeah. Okay, so if we change our limits, we get a different answer even though it's the same function. And you'll see why um, once we continue with developing this idea. But right now you just need to know that this is how we calculate it. All right? Make sense?